Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to look at a few different PMP devices or portable media player devices. These devices are not smartphones, they're not PDAs, they're mostly meant to play media files like pictures, music, um, audio and video, movies and stuff like that. So their functionality is more limited, but there are a few different interesting PMPs that have come by uh, across the years. So I want to just show you guys a few of these devices. So first up is the Philips PMC, the Portable Media Center. Now, uh, Portable Media Center is actually a version of Windows CE that uh, Microsoft released in the mid-2000s. So you guys remember there was this initiative by Microsoft called the Media Center. And in the mid-2000s, there was a version, even a version of Windows XP, I remember, called the Media Center Edition. And um, basically, Microsoft's plan was to integrate Windows into your living room and make it easier for you to play media across all your different devices. Um, but they kind of failed because it wasn't really easy to, to use, it wasn't intuitive, and um, they only supported Microsoft files. So I guess you can think of it as a um, like iTunes, except like Microsoft specific. Um, but Apple's able to get away with it because they're Apple. Uh, Microsoft isn't as able to get away with their proprietary stuff, right? So usually, uh, like with iTunes, you got to convert everything to Apple's format, right? So with the uh, Portal Media Center, you had to convert everything to WMV for video files or WMA for audio files, which are Microsoft specific formats. And I guess people didn't really like that. Um, again, Apple's able to get away with this because they have such a loyal fan base, but Microsoft doesn't really have such a loyal fan base, so they aren't really able to, um, to get away with it. And that's why this initiative kind of failed. But um, it's also interesting to see how in the history, um, how the different manufacturers kind of made devices to take advantage of the portable media center kind of initiative. So we had a few different manufacturers. Um, this is the Philips PMC, which came out in 2006. All these devices came out around 2004 to 2006, so the mid 2000s, because that's when the initiative was most, um, most popular. So came out around the same time, I would say, as the UMPC initiative. So uh, yeah, this is the Philips, which is not a well-known one, but there's also, I would say the most well-known portable media center is the Creative Zen. Uh, so there was this device called the Creative Zen Portable Media uh, Center, I think. And it was this big-ass device. It was really heavy and chunky. Uh, it had a, like a slightly bigger screen than this one. I think this one is a 3.5-inch display. Uh, the Creative Zen Portable Media Center was like 38 and I remember seeing it back in the day and going like, wow, that device looks kind of cool because, you know, it could play um, DVD quality video, which at the time was 480p, right? And that was high resolution at the time because there weren't any devices that could play HD videos at the time. But it had a pretty good display for the time, but it was like so chunky and so fat, right? So that was probably the most well-known one. Um, Creative later replaced that with the Creative Zen Vision M, which I already did. Uh, kind of a video of already in the Creative Zen Vision W, which is more of a accurate replacement for the video playing side. Um, so yeah, the Creative Zen Portable Media Center, that was probably the most well-known one, but there's also the iRiver PMC. Um, you guys might have heard of iRiver because in the 2000s, they made a lot of different MP3 players and PMPs to compete with the iPod and the Creative Zens. Um, and yeah, the Philips one. So there wasn't a whole lot of manufacturers that made the PMC PMC devices, but uh, they were just around for a very short amount of time before it basically failed and went away. But uh, yeah, it's still interesting to see these kind of devices. They're basically like a relic, like a time capsule. All right, so this Philips one is kind of special. I think this is probably the least well-known PMC device. I, you can barely even find any reviews of this device online. Um, it, I think it's some crazy model number, but I'm just going to call it the Philips PMC or Portable Media Center, because that's what this device is. It has this Windows XP start menu type button in the middle, um, back button right here, and then you have a D-pad to navigate through the menus for selection, OK button. Uh, you have media player buttons right here, volume, uh, previous next track, play pause, very media specific buttons. Um, it's arranged in a manner that's similar to a video game console, like a Game Boy Advance. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. In the slide here, you have the, the power switch right here, which is a slider and a lock. And then you have the DC charging port, of course, proprietary. Uh, 30 gigabytes, that's how much it stores. And that's pretty much all what the other PMC devices all store too. There was a rotating hard drive, I think 1.8 inch hard drive, uh, 30 gigs. 
And then there's this slide to open right here. And I think this is kind of like a, it's kind of like a kickstand almost. Yeah. So you can set it down like this, right? And then watch your TVs and TV shows and movies. And there's a reset button there as well. Um, so yeah, it looks kind of like a small portable TV almost because of the aspect ratio. So that's kind of cute. And of course, Windows Portable Media Center uh, is a, it was built on top of Windows CE, which is Windows Mobile. So you have the sticker right here. Um, that's their embedded operating system, which was used for PDAs at the time, like pocket PCs. And then uh, Microsoft kind of repurposed it to work with PMPs as well and called it Portable Media Center. And then on top here, you have the uh, audio video jacks here. You have a headphone jack. And then this is kind of interesting in what makes the Philips PMC kind of stand out among the other PMC devices is not only does it have AV out, which is actually quite standard, right? This is a, an adapter and it splits into a composite cable. The AV in, this is more interesting. So you can actually plug a special cable in here to record, um, and I believe it takes in a composite as well. It records composite video from a source. So this could be from anything that uh, has a composite out, right? It could be your video game uh, console, could be your camcorder, uh, could be your DVD player, right? Something has a composite out, this could actually record that. And that's kind of quite interesting about the Philips PMC. I think that makes it kind of special and unique. And that has a mini USB port for data. So anyways, um, let's boot it up. Charger right here. All right, um, let's turn it on. All right, so Philips. I think this might be the only Philips electronic device that I have. I don't have many Philips devices. Windows Mobile, of course, that's what Portable Media Center OS is built on. And um, there's you have the Windows XP like splash screen right here. And yeah, this does remind you a lot of Windows Media Player from Windows XP, doesn't it? Yeah, it reminds you a lot of Windows Media Player from the good old Windows XP days. Uh, so yeah, there's um, the settings. You can change music, shuffle, pictures, transitions. So yeah, you can do TV out, TV system. Yeah, okay. International, I wonder if this is the language. Yep. What's effects? Screen effects. Okay, I guess this is the fading fading transition that you get right here. Is that the, what the effect is? Recording, okay. Uh, this is what the recording jack is. You can choose the resolution, 640 by 480, which is DVD resolution. Quality, choose that as well. Recording time. Um, you can choose that as well. So that's for video. You can also record audio as well. How, how much time you want to record. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so this is the recording, like I said. You could, you could record video, and so you just input um, their proprietary um, jack right here. And this is where you can record it. Um, I have not done this, but uh, I have read some reviews that says it's basically like a hit and miss like some things do record correctly but other things don't and there might be artifacts i'm thinking it's going to be similar to how arcos does it because the only other electronic device the only other pmp i know that records from an audio or video input is the arcos so it might be similar to that but the arcos does it pretty well i don't know about the philips pmc again this device is fairly obscure so it's even hard to find many people that, uh, you know, it's hard to find a review of people that are um, using this device. You can time a recording. Uh, it reminds me of the days when I used to play around with my parents' VCR, and uh, you can actually schedule recordings, right, of your favorite TV shows uh, on your VCR. Uh, but yeah, here's my TV. Um, this is an interface that reminds me of the Microsoft Zune interface that it's because I was playing around with the Zune very recently. Um, of course, this came out before the Zune, but um, there's some influences here, you know, very similar to what you would see on Windows Media Player. So here's some. Uh, I actually don't know any of these artists, but let's click on one. Uh, so you can play some music here. All right, and this is what the 
your face looks like. You can turn up the volume right here. Yep, so play pause, go next track. Uh, I don't want to play too much of it because I don't know if this music is copyrighted. But I do want to show you guys this is what it looks like when it's playing. Um, yeah, so I guess it just shows you the um, album, album cover, I guess. And a portable playlist, okay. Yeah, so just volume, everything. So um, yeah, this works fairly well as a music player. I wouldn't mind using that even today because it's fairly responsive. Uh, actually, instead of doing that, I think I can even press just this middle button here to go home. Or actually to bring it up, actually. That's kind of weird. I expected it to actually go home, and instead it just pops it up in front of my current uh, my current screen. So a little bit unexpected there. Um, okay, let's look at pictures. Whoops. Forgot to use this one. All right. Preloaded content. Let's do some slideshow. So you can play a slideshow here. Again, not a touch screen, so I can't do anything here. But you can, you know, choose to transition here. The slideshow. Wow, this is the sample content they have. Shuffle transitions five seconds. Okay, two thousand six. That's when this picture was taken. Oh, loading. <laughs> there was a loading icon. That's probably a relic of Windows Mobile. Right. Anyways, yeah, that's the that's the pictures here. Um, yeah, I'm playing right here. Yeah. So it should be uh, three seconds now. It should be faster. All right. Anyways, that's the pictures. Um, let's go to video. Whoops. Let's go to video. Um, okay, we got some nice sample pictures here. So <laughs> they're all tutorial videos. Okay, let's see. How do I record videos on here? Let's see what Phillips has to say about it. The Philips Portable Media Center allows you to record videos from different sources. Like now, uh, this display is not very good by today's standards. Uh, I can tell that the color palette is kind of limited. Probably 262,000 colors is what I'm guessing. Um, the video does play quite smoothly. I just think that the color palette is not very expansive. Look, I'm, wa I'm watching a Philips PMC inside a Philips PMC. <laughs> so can I fast forward a little bit? Yep, I can, I can uh, skip ahead. Play here. Pause. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is uh this guy's TV, I guess. He's going to record from it. Oh. Okay. And this is the loudest it gets. 20. 20 stops of volume. <laughs> kind of sad, but... I mean, this this is meant to be used with a headphone. The speakers don't get very loud. But I'm gonna put this down. Oh, look at this! I'm watching my pocket TV here. Yeah, this is not the the best stuff to watch during a flight, though. This is, this material is a little bit dry for me. But yeah, that's the video capabilities. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the video does play pretty smoothly, but I'm, I assume that this has to be in the WMV format. All the audio files have to be in the WMA format, so you, you got to convert them. And um, they have to be, you know, a certain resolution because they don't accept high resolutions back then. Yeah, so you, if you try to play HD video, it probably won't work. Uh, none of the PMPs I'm going to show you today, they they don't really work with HD video very well because they're very old devices. So you, I think most DVD quality video should work, though, so... If you have an old AVI file lying around, you can probably try to convert that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the Portable Media Center, as you can see. Uh, the interface is very similar to Windows Media Player from Windows XP. Um, and I mean this operating system was built on top of Windows CE and Pocket PC operating systems. So you can see the kind of artifacts here. Um, 
yeah, but that's it, guys. That's a Philips TMC, the Portable Media Center Initiative by Microsoft, which is a relic, just like the UMPC um, kind of initiative that Microsoft tried to push in the Zune, right? All those were um, in the Microsoft Kin as well. So these are all new initiatives that Microsoft tried to push and kind of failed on. Um, but it's, it's interesting to see from a history standpoint uh, some of this stuff, right? Otherwise, it would just be lost through history. So that's it. That's the Portable Media Center Philips PMC, which is probably the most obscure device. You don't see many reviews online for that. But uh, here it is, guys. Here's my review for it anyways. All right, guys. And up next, we have the Arco 7. Uh, this is a PMP that came out, I think, in 2008, 2009-ish. And this was actually my main PMP for a while. So I actually use this device, unlike a lot of the devices I reviewed. I actually use this, and I've been keeping it in my collection for a long time now. I think since 2010-ish, because I actually bought it back then. Um, and yeah, I actually did a video. This was one of my first gadget review videos I did. Uh, it actually comes... You can actually buy a DVR station for this device separately, so you can actually record from your... Uh, from basically any any source with a composite or a component... Uh, output. So I did some recordings from my PS3. Um, you can also do it from a camcorder or from your TV. Uh, you know, other video game consoles. It's a pretty cool device because the Arcos... So Arcos is a French company, for those of you who don't know. Um, they're not that popular anymore, but back in their heyday, just like iRiver and Koan, they made a lot of PMPs in the 2000s. But unique amongst PMP makers, Arcos devices usually had the ability to record audio and video from other sources. So like I said, uh, you can pay extra to buy the DVR station. So I actually have the DVR station with me. I've been keeping it for a while. Um, this is the Arcos DVR station. Uh, what's special about this device is that it's able to record from different sources. So this is a dock, basically. But see all these outputs and inputs here? So um, outputs, you have uh, RCA output. And you can also output into component as well in S-Video. And what's unique about the Arcos is, um, so most devices do have audio outputs and video outputs, but unlike other devices, this actually has inputs as well. It also has the same RCA inputs, component inputs, S-Video inputs, um, and uh, even HDMI as well. So that means you can actually record from a whole bunch of different sources, which makes this device quite unique. Uh, it's kind of like back in the day when you had a VCR, you can record your favorite TV shows or movies. And I know the legality may be a little bit blurry <laughs> um, from doing that, but I really do think that the Arcos was kind of unique just for allowing you to do something like that. So um, yeah, this device is really cool. Um, just go about the specs. That I think this runs Linux uh, or a version of Linux. They probably put their own skin on top of it. Um, 256 megs of RAM, um, an 800 megahertz dual core processor. Um, it's an ARM Cortex A8, I think. For, this is a 7-inch display, 800 by 40 resolution, so this is DVD resolution, which was, you know, lot, not a lot of PMPs played HD videos at the time. So you can't really expect uh, HD resolution from the time, but uh, DVD quality was considered good enough at the time. And most of my videos were DVD quality at the time. They were um, DVD rips, right? Um, and yeah, this actually, one of the main features of this device has a removable battery, by the way. And I really like this gunmetal finish. I know it's a fingerprint magnet, but uh, this gunmetal finish looks really attractive. So, yeah, removable battery. And uh, this thing actually stores a lot of media. So, just take a guess, right? We looked at the Philips. This only stores 30 gigs. The Creative Zen Vision M stores 30 or 60 gigs, right? Guess how much... Guess how much media this thing can store? 60 gigs? No. This thing can store uh, 320 gigs. <laughs> yes, I am not joking. 320 gigs, that's how much this thing can store. Um, it is absolutely a beast when it comes to storing movies, uh, video. That's why I use this device for so long. And um, I actually don't even mind it using today because it just stores so much stuff. Like... Put your, uh, I think you can, you can play 
720p videos on here if you convert them properly. I don't think you can play full HD, but I think you can play 720p videos on here. So uh, yeah, you can put like basically whole seasons worth of TV shows on here. I think I put all 10 seasons of Friends on here. Um, I put like all the seasons of Seinfeld on here, uh, all my anime on here, a whole bunch of movies, like 320 gigs. You can store a lot. That's more than a standard laptop, right? Which usually only has 256 gigs of storage. Like that's crazy. And that's why I kept this for so long. Really, really cool device. Um, stereo speakers on the side here. Uh, and then on top you have, this is the power button right here. Uh, volume rockers right here. Again, I like the design, very sleek. Fits in with the gunmetal finish. You have the proprietary charger and dock here, which is used with the DVR station. And this is the battery removal, so you can change out the battery. So you can, you know, in theory, you can use this device for a very long time if you have swappable batteries, right? External batteries. And uh, yeah, it's a very cool device, so uh, let's turn it on. All right, so it has another proprietary charging port here. Uh, this is for use when we're not uh, going through the DVR. And then a uh, headphone jack right here as well. So here's a splash screen here. Arcos Entertainment Your Way. Um, by the way, guys, Arcos is... Uh, back in the day, they made a lot of really cool innovative stuff. Like this PMP here. Um, unfortunately, these days, they don't really make anything that special. Like, I would say around... The 2010s time they decided to just be like everyone else and started making copycat android devices so they made a lot of below average android phones android tablets they always try to keep up with the latest trend but they're not very good they always like copycat devices from china and they started rebranding them with arcos and it didn't sell very well and i kind of feel bad about what happened to this company um because arcos used to be in my opinion the best pmp maker overall like like compared to koan creative uh, iRiver, even the iPod, um, I thought Arcos was the best because they had, you know, you could, we could record from different sources and usually the video player was very good. It was top notch. You can play all the different uh, media files. You can play DivX, XVID, all the different codecs. Um, I think you had to buy some of them as plugins, which is kind of a shame. But once you did that, it, play, it played pretty much everything, like even MKV files, Matroska files. Um, I think OGG files, you could play like basically everything and with very good quality too. So I kind of feel bad for Arcos. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I still have so, a lot of stuff on here. Like I said, 320 gigs, you could play, a, put a lot of stuff on here, right? I put the whole seasons of Mr. Bean on here. Um, Family Guy, I think I put, yeah, a lot of episodes on here as well. All five seasons of Spider-Man, the animated series, I put that on here. Uh, yeah, just very, very cool. Let's, um... All right, let's take a look at Beast Horrors, I guess. Cause this is a old TV show that I really like, actually. Still, let's uh, actually go to season two. I like the trans metal transformers here. Okay, and it plays videos pretty well. This is not a IPS display. It's a TFT display, so you gotta angle it towards you. Resistive touchscreen, but um. You know, I'm willing to overlook all of that because it just stores so much, stores so much, and the video is pretty smooth, right? The video playback's pretty smooth. Yeah, so was put on the Exelon for what reason? The speakers are pretty good too. Stereo speakers, better than uh, better than a lot of smartphones these days. Even I would say these speakers. This is Optimus Primal, the leader of the Maximals. No, no sorry. <clears throat> My transmetal bot's been soaking up so much energy on I'm about to blast one off. So uh, I still have a lot of these DVD rips. So if you have any DVD quality video files, this, this uh, player is really good for them. Um, let's look at some movies. I uh, have Guardians of the Galaxy on here even. Uh, I want to play something that won't get me into too much trouble. Not something from Disney. I do like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That's really good. Jurassic Park, Kingsman. So as you can see, I have a uh, even I have Blu-ray 1080p Blu-ray rips on here. So maybe this can even play full HD. Huh. Okay. So maybe this can even play full HD. Okay, that's cool. 
So let's look at, uh, let's see. Kentucky Fried Movie. This is, uh, okay, this is something I could play here. So there's a 720p file over here, and it can play it. Partner, a reassuring smile and a gentle kiss. I love Kentucky Fried Movie, one of my favorite satire comedies. Then, move to opposite areas of the bedroom to disrobe. Yeah, I know the picture doesn't look too well here, but it's a TFT display. It looks pretty good in person if you face it head on. Um, so yeah, it actually does play 720p files and even 1080p files. So uh, let's take a look. This is Tarzan from Disney. Hopefully I don't get into too much trouble for showing a bit of this. Yeah, full 1080p files. You can play that as well. So uh, this is uh, Tarzan. Fantastic movie that's part of the Disney Renaissance. Right. Yeah, um, Tekken Blood Vengeance. That's a cool anime movie as well. Oh yeah, this, this part's cool. Yeah, this is a really nice video player, okay. So actually you can play up to full HD. So that's even better than I expected. Basically every, almost every format, it can play every codec. That's why I still keep this device around. It's just fantastic for playing videos. To show you an anime, let's show you an anime as well. Gundam Sea Destiny, one of my favorite animes. Again, the speakers are pretty good. Yep. Uh, so yeah, some anime and... Yeah, this is just great for playing videos. Um, music. I wonder if I have any music on here as well. Uh, so I have Chrono Trigger. Okay. So here's some of my music files. Uh, let's play something that won't get me into too much trouble again. This should be fine. Yep, uh, this is the volume rockers here. This is, I'll play at full volume, so you guys can hear, how, this is how loud the speaker gets at full volume. So yeah, the audio player is very acceptable as well. Uh, you could use it for this. Although I would say that the Arcos' best strength is uh, as a video player, not an audio player. And we can, there's web radio, uh, no, you gotta connect to the internet for that. Photos. I think I put some some K-pop photos on here. There's uh, Wonder Girls, I think. And you can. This is a resistive touchscreen, so you can't uh, pinch to zoom or anything like that. But uh, you can definitely swipe. Oh, there's a pink. You can definitely swipe using your stylus. You do need you do need kind of a stylus for this. Uh, I wouldn't say it's too necessary because the buttons are so big and the screen is so big. But um, I would still recommend using a stylus. So this is all Wonder Girls, huh? Well, this is Sonia Shide, the girls' generation. Uh, 21. Villive. Ooh, a pink. All right. Uh, so yeah, there's some photos you can look at here. You can zoom. Slide a, start a slideshow. Nope. Uh, start a slideshow. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, photo capabilities. Yep, so you can do all that. Um, play games. I wonder if there's... Oh, it's not really nothing much. I think you got to connect to the internet for that. Flash apps. So I actually have a lot of Flash apps I downloaded from Newgrounds back in the day here. So let's try... Uh, so these are all from the mid-2000s, I think. That's when I downloaded most of these. What's the Matrix one I just saw? Metal Gear Awesome. That's Metal Slug. Okay, let's try Metal Gear Awesome. So, uh, yeah, let's play. This is a Flash movie, I think. Uh, I hate this suit. It was 
Hands up, Snake. Ah, uh, can I take off the suit? Hello, Sally Snake. Oh, my God, Hardness, I want to bang you. Oh, I can't believe I'm being hit on me. They famous Sally Snake. Okay, shut up. <laughs> I'm going to get into this hind now. This is pretty funny. Hey, Snake, check it. Go sneak that shit. Okay. Whose footprints are these? Snake? Yo, Snake! Snake! Shut up, i Snake. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's pretty funny. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Flash stuff I downloaded. Matrix, what's this one? Oh, it's a stick figure. Man, where's the stupid train? Wait a minute, I'm in a train station? Whoa, no way! What am I doing in a train station? Huh, maybe that girl can tell me. Hi, little girl. Hello, you creepy old man. Whoa! Had... Good stuff. This brings back memories. Uh, I watched these all in the mid-2000s, I think. I downloaded, I think... Okay, Xiao Xiao, this is a classic one. Remember the Xiao Xiao, the stick man? Yeah, it's classic. This is kind of where the stick figure flash movies kind of started. With Xiao Xiao. Oh. Stick figure flash movies brings me back. There's like matrix moves. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely play any of your Swift files on here. Um, I got a lot of Swift files I downloaded. Uh, TV, so you can actually schedule TV recordings here just like you can with a VCR using the DVR station right here. Um, so you can look at the program guide. We have internet access, right? Okay. So for TV, I guess TiVo was really popular at the time, so this is trying to be like TiVo. Uh, this is some recordings I actually made. So this is from uh, my PS3 from 2013. Yeah, this is a Assassin's Creed. Revelations, I believe. Yeah, man, I made this back in 2013. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so this footage all recorded from my PS3 using the DVR station. So again, very, very cool thing to do. Not uh, nothing else could really do that at the time, right? This was very unique to this device, to the Arcos devices. Um, so I think the sixth generation, which was the Arcos 604, 605, or 504, um, those ones could all do that. Um, this is the, the seventh generation, and I think starting from the next generation, it, they took out the DVR feature, so you couldn't record from anything anymore. And from that point on, I would say that Arcos devices are not really that unique. So when Arcos was in their heyday, they made some really cool devices. And then, um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, they started just doing the same crap as everyone else after that. Uh, web. This is the web browser that they have. Um, see if we can actually view some websites here. All right, so this is actually using a spinning hard drive. So actually, I can hear the hard drive or feel the hard drive spinning uh, inside this device. That's how it can offer so much storage, right? has to be using a rot rotating hard drive. I can't use the internet right now, but um, if you can connect to a network, you can do email. You can set up email here, browse the web. So it's a little bit more than just a PMP. You can do some other stuff, uh, even do a contact list. Pretty much like everything didn't have like a contact list feature back then. Media Club, this is definitely not available anymore. This is something Arcos did, I think. You have to uh, subscribe to something, and then you, you buy stuff from the Arco store. Yeah, that's definitely not available anymore. Settings widgets. What's this? Calculator widget. Currency converter widget. Some other stuff you can do here. RSS news feed. Notes. Union converter. Keep a list of your notes. Weather forecast. That's cool stuff. But I just want to add a calculator widget. So this is a pretty basic calculator here, but... 
Here's a widget right there, currency converter. I wonder how it does, <laughs> exchange rates are from this days ago. Yeah, I was like, how did it convert com currency? You had to connect to the internet for that. Data vault, password protected. I think this is just a, uh, add a new note. And type something on here. Okay, so here's your note. And how do I write something on here? Oh, here's the key keyboard. Here we go. So you got to use this resistive to keyboard. Hey, I'm on a Arcos. Oh. Definitely, this is not an iPhone keyboard or a modern smartphone keyboard for sure. So you can take notes. Unit converter. That's another utility right there you have. Weather forecast. I think you got to be connected to the internet for this. Yep. So some uh, cool extra stuff that you got here. Files. This is a file explorer right here. So 320 gigs. Again, massive hard drive. It's nice to have a file explorer. And you can even, I think it even splits the two so you can copy and paste, which is cool. Uh, PDF viewer. So I actually have some sheet music on here uh, that I put on back in the day. So if you want some Chopin, uh, this can be any PDF file. I just put sheet music because I was learning piano at the time. Obviously, I'm not good enough to play Chopin, uh, but I wanted to learn. So I put some sheet music on here as PDF files. But you can put any ebook on here as well. So I, the Arcos can even function as an ebook reader in that sense, right? If you put it any PDF, uh, if you put it as a PDF on here, come on. This has no home button, so sometimes I wish it did because the screen is not all that responsive sometimes. Here's your settings right here. Firmware plugins. This is where you would buy. Yeah, see, this is the plugins you would have to buy. Right, so I bought the real video, HD video. <clears throat> That's why I can play HD video. I think it doesn't play HD video out of the box. You have to buy it. And then real video for real player. Um, and then all this is installed already. Storage. Again, look at that. Look at what storage I have here. More than my own laptop. Yeah, 304 gigs of usable storage. 320 total unformatted. Um, screens, uh, LCD backlight, touchscreen, appearance. You can change the picture here. Ooh, okay. You can change your wallpaper. This is a live wallpaper, it looks like. Glow. Yeah, I like, I like my... This is the wallpaper I just downloaded, so I just use that one. Um... TV control right here. You can set the infrared emitter, control your TV receiver. So many cool stuff you can do with this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so many cool things you can do here. And then add ons is the DVR station. So I mentioned uh, how you would control that is you go to DVR station, and then if you're connected, uh, I'm not going to connect it because I already have a video showing how it works, but if you have it connected, you can record from an input source that has a composite or component out. So that could be anything, basically, and from a game console, TV, camcorder, whatever. Uh, Snap-on is a very similar station. Remote FM, this is a... Also, there's an FM transmitter, so you can record uh, music from the radio. So the Arcos is basically like a ripper stream, man. <laughs> like, you can record from TV, you can record from... Uh, game console, you can record from the uh, FM radio station. Like, you can just rip anything off, I think. <laughs> so, it's like a ripper stream here. HDMI dock. Ooh, buy now. Ideal phone you're on the move. This dock is for outputting, I think. So, this is kind of like the DVR light because it only outputs, it doesn't record in. So, DVR station is like the ultimate accessory because you can, you can do video out audio out and you can do video in audio in right and you have the hdmi even which not a lot of devices had at the time so uh yeah guys anyways that's the arco 7 uh still a really cool device um massive amounts of storage 320 gigs and it just stores basically every video <laughs> almost every video i have and then 
Um, you can even put HD videos on here, full HD videos. It plays all of them, plays most formats, music, photos, even flash applications, records from different sources. Um, just a really, really cool PMP. So uh, I still I still like the Arcos, and it's it's basically a device I've never parted with because of how usable, functional, and unique it is. And uh, yeah, guys, that's it. Um, Arcos Seven. Um, compare, you can see the size, right? It's like twice the size of the Philips, uh, but it's so much more functional than the Philips, right? So I I actually used this, right? That's how functional it was. Um, I don't use a lot of my review devices, obviously, but I would still use this maybe even today because of how much stuff I can put on here, right? Like today you had to buy an SD card, right? But then even SD cards, I would say you can't really put, um, I guess you can put, yeah, you can put a lot on SD cards, right? But uh, this one just comes with all the storage built in. You don't need to swap out SD cards or anything. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's it. Arco 7. Um, thanks for taking a look through some of my PMP devices today. And as always, thanks for watching.